in third year i joined naro so as to cover up the special things that we generally uh, miss during our simple reading preparation and started giving test series and solving the questions so that helped a lot in my last month of preparation i mainly uh, studied uh, maro modules and the notes uh, that were available and then i focused on giving grand tests and the various subject based tests they though they were very helpful for exams so my approach was case based whatever case that we used to see in words and uh, go back read from harrison then cover up the maro video solve a uh, simple number of questions high yielding points and then uh, in last month when the exams were approaching especially my md medicine then i used to go through uh, subject wise like first i tried to finish cardiology nephrology then the uh, rheumatology infectious disease all those things so mostly so i went through case based so actually i tried solving a uh, my main focus was uh, solving questions of areas that are uh, weaker like uh, there are many topics that we read and easily forget so i tried to practice more and more questions of those topics but then again i tried to cover each and every topic question bank because it's easier to uh, solve familiar questions rather than new questions at the, in that short duration of 3 hours so i gave many grand tests and subject based tests and then uh, based on my weaker areas i covered the topics again and again the viva starts from the basic clinical concepts and then it goes towards the management so uh, while reading through my, uh, harrison as well as the maro notes and uh, videos it's easier to attempt all those questions basically the clinical part conceptual part as well as the treatment guidelines so uh, welcome ladies and gentlemen welcome to this uh, topper session it gives me great pleasure to introduce uh, dr krithika so a bit about introduction on her is that uh, she did her mbbs as well as md she's first chance in uh, both of these She did her MBBS. She belongs to 2013 batch of KGMU Lucknow, and 2019 batch she did her MD medicine at RML New Delhi. So, uh, congrats, Kritika, and uh, welcome to the show. So, we're going to pick your Thank brains you, and see how you uh, ace this uh, difficult exam. So, uh, first, I would like to know. So, you have secured rank 17, so you could pretty much get anything you wanted. It's not like in the olden times. Maybe olden times is like last year. Yes, where sir. you had to study pick your specialty beforehand and then study for that so now it's like you can choose any specialty you want so what specialty would you like to choose do you have any particular specialty in mind or you're yet to decide yes sir, i actually want to do dm nephrology actually nephrology was my first uh, choice since beginning of my md medicine so i'll be pursuing dm nephrology so any any but <laughs> rakesh should be very happy so any particular uh, reason why you choose chose nephrology uh, uh, so firstly actually i had seen many videos of rakesh nayar sir and they were also impressive but then again uh, nephrology is kind of core medicine and i would like to continue into core medicine like most of the topics and all those things so those make me more <laughs> happy to continue nephrology is one thing which is uh, core very intrinsically answer. it's a natural continuation of md medicine so it's not something yes, like yeah. cardiology where you deviate a lot it's uh, basically something which is a natural continuation of md medicine the kidney is a window for a lot of systemic diseases so you see that yes, everything yeah. in somehow somewhere involves the kidney so if you are a in, if you are an internist you have to know something about the kidney so nephrology is many people choo- choose nephrology because it's like a natural continuation of md medicine and since they love md medicine they want to continue in such a way get a super specialty degree but also not lose touch with medicine so uh, anyway yes, it's a very good choice in fact uh, one my second choice was actually nephrology so in my time you had to cho- choose one subject so i chose cardiology but my second choice was actually uh, dm nephrology so uh, how did you approach your preparation so there was a lot of confusion initially that uh, there would probably be a syllabus change and then there was probably a case going on so it is very unclear so uh, did you how did you approach your uh, md uh, your preparation one for one for your md medicine as such and two for neat ss actually i joined my md medicine in 2019 and so first year was most of the thing we used to learn about the clinical skills and the basic emergency medicine that are important to manage the uh, emergencies that we go through and at rml delhi it's very hectic so uh, in first year we don't get time to read a lot so just going through the cl- basic clinical skills developing more and more clinical skills and uh, basic medicine 
in from second year i started reading harrison and uh, the mainly the guidelines and uh, a little bit of super specialty books but then again there was confusion between the whatever what will be the pattern of examination like Uh, like our seniors had to appear for 60 40 pattern but in our scenario it was 200 questions with mixed questions from all the specialties so initially uh, i went through the harrison only because it is <clears throat> must need for completing the md medicine and then uh, in second year in third year i joined naro so as to cover up the special things that we generally uh, miss during our simple reading preparation and started giving test series and solving the questions so that helped a lot in my last month of preparation i mainly uh, studied uh, maro modules and the notes uh, that were available and then i focused on giving grand tests and the various subject based tests they though they were very helpful for exams so when did Because, you join maro so i joined maro in my uh, around uh, may 2021 yeah In my so third year, just, just a few months ago. Beginning of my third year, yes, sir. So, uh, how was your association with Maro? So, how did you find the videos? Were you able to complete the videos? Did you have? Did you watch more of nephrology videos, or were you just uh, seeing cases in your wards and then going in back and uh, seeing the videos that are related to that particular case? So, how was your approach? Each one has a particular approach to seeing these videos because if you look at the videos, they are pretty voluminous. So each one has yes, a particular sir. approach. So how was your approach to seeing the videos? So my approach was case based. Whatever case that we used to see in wards and uh, go back, read from Harrison, then cover up the narrow videos, solve uh, simple number of questions, high yielding points, and then uh, in last month when the exams were approaching, especially my MD medicine, then I used to go through uh, subject wise. Like first I tried to finish cardiology, nephrology, then the uh, rheumatology, infectious disease, all those things. So mostly so I went through case based in third year. So, what all what all subjects were you able to finish from the Maro videos? So At honestly speaking, yeah, general medicine part was good. Actually, I had covered those things in my uh, NEET PG preparation also. I was a Maro plan user in my NEET PG also. So from there, I uh, chose to continue it for so those specialty preparations again. Then uh, I completed uh, basically cardiology. The, those were of really help, especially the rheumatic heart disease portion, and it came in exams also. They were very well, helpful. Yes, sir. And then uh, nephrology, I was uh, able to complete because for INESS there is a, मतलब we have to prepare sixty questions uh, from nephrology. So I was targeting the same, but I could not appear in the INESS exam that yeah, happened in May. Unfortunately. But, Yeah, unfortunately, to let the users know, uh, Dr. Kritika had her MD exam on the same day of INIS, so she could not appear for this. But anyway, mm -hmm. all things for the best, and uh, she secured a prestigious seat in NEET SS. So everything happens for the good. That's what I believe in. So uh, yes, you were able to finish a lot of videos of Maro. So uh, how was your impression on the videos? Were they difficult? Were they time-consuming? Were they too vast? Were they easy to understand? How was your impression on the videos? So they are really good in terms of uh, as an MD student, you need to know most of the things because we come across many such cases. So for building approach, they were good for uh, guiding the treatment. Also, they were of a uh, lot of help, especially solving the tricky questions and uh, the concept based points, especially covered in cardiology and nephrology. They were of really help in building long term concepts. So I would highly recommend those videos and such. Uh, the test series also they were also really good because at the time of appearing need uh, SS examination, various Lindy questions were there and the Maro question bank was more of the uh, covering the Lindy questions. So it was a great help in uh, managing the time. Also, yeah, yeah. exactly. So uh, you need to have various resources. See, one of the golden resources for the postgraduates is up to date. Okay, so up to date is a brilliant resource. It offers you the latest guidelines, but the problem is it's it's based on text. So there are various limitations of a text-based uh, learning platform, but Maro offers you a video-based learning platform where you have that corresponding super specialist, cardiologist, neurologist, nephrologist, who comes and teaches his subject from his point of view. So when you are in your wards, your your professor or STEM professor teaches you from a physician's point of view, and uh, so they approach a cardiology case or a neurology case or a nephrology case from a physician's point of view. 
but remember there is an alternative approach also which is very very useful for you to learn so you might learn this when you go for your super specialty postings but learning from an app like maro offers great uh, benefits and as well as you can it is repeatable so if you are uh, unable to follow it you can play it once more you can uh, listen to various videos at various speeds you have your notes so you get a you get a wholesome learning experience so um, how was your preparation on harrison so you were you one of those uh, persons who used to sit and read harrison cover to cover or were you more a focused approach no so i haven't still after completing md medicine i would say ki i haven't covered uh, harrison cover to cover harrison. like there are many parts that are left untouched so uh, i used to like i said uh, it was my case based approach i used to see cases go back and uh, learn through the books and then take a help some of some uh, marrow notes and videos so, so, so mostly yeah. yeah mostly i used so, to read harrison based on case based yes yes so you used to for have focus learning of harrison right yes so uh, i just wanted to know so that the parts which you read from harrison so how easy was harrison for you to read so was it an easy textbook to read or did you really have to spend some time and effort in order to look, understand what's given so in harrison it, it takes some effort to read the book because many a times we just read and then forget whatever it's written there so in my second exactly. year i basically covered the approach part uh, so it was easier than to cover the systems i had covered most of the systems uh, basically the cardio nephro neuro rheumat and infectious disease but then again there are many such topics like uh, age based medicine yeah. and harrison so a portion that i haven't covered yeah right. harrison i feel is a brilliant book but the problem is it is it takes a lot of time and effort it is not a book where you just read it once and everything sticks in your brain it takes really time and effort in order to read and understand harrison especially with that very small font and with uh, uh, the lack of diagram so it, it is it is from time immemorial immemor- from your generation to my generation to the people before me they have all spent time and effort in order to learn harrison that's why i always i always wish there was something like maro when i did my md medicine so that uh, you know it makes things easier for me for example if i see a case of say uh, gleen barre syndrome then i can quickly have a look at uh, what uh, an, a neurologist teaches me so that is a, it's something in the palm of my hand so it makes it very easy for me to understand things and there's nothing like uh, learning medicine with the patient nearby so if you learn a particular point you can go and see that whether that sign or symptom is present for that particular patient so again so i think uh, it's a brilliant learning resource i think most people should use it appropriately so uh, how so you learned a lot through the video based lectures so how was your approach to mcqs did you solve mcqs extensively or uh, were you solving mcqs only for those areas which you did not cover so how was your approach towards mcqs so actually i tried solving a uh, my main focus was uh, solving questions of areas that are uh, weaker like uh, there are many topics that we read and easily forget so i tried to practice more and more questions of those topics but then again i tried to cover each and every topic question bank because it's easier to uh, solve familiar questions rather than new questions at the, in that short duration of 3 hours so i gave many grant tests and subject based tests and then uh, based on my weaker areas i covered the ga- topics again and again so that was so i think you, yeah i think giving grant tests is very important because you need to know where you stand so it's like yes, uh, uh, you need to know where you stand among your peers you might be the big shot in your college but again it is always useful to know where you are in the, in the national level or in the state level because only then you will know you will have that fear and you will want to improve more and more you will know things or areas in your in something you are weaker in it's not like card now it's not like cardiology or neurology anymore you might be excellent in cardiology neurology and nephrology but if you are weak in rheumatology and hematology you might not score such a good rank so rather than having in depth knowledge on one particular subject as it is required in iniss i think you need to have a superficial knowledge on all subjects so that is what is going to give you the rank so did you read your uh, super speci- any of the super specialty textbooks so you are uh, preparing for nephrology so did you read anything like fihali shreya brenna something like that uh, sir i went through fihali uh, basically the tables uh, i didn't had a lot of time to read the entire textbook so i just covered the tables they though they were of great help 
like the important table from the section of glomerulonephritis chronic kidney disease and aki portion those topics are important even for md exams as well as uh, for neat ss and nis so i went through the tables and uh, harrison text i read completely so how useful was marrow for your uh, md medicine so you just told us about the neat ss so we have this notion that marrow is primarily an entrance based uh, or an ss based preparation platform but it's actually much more than that so how useful was it in dealing with patients in your wards so it was of great help because uh, one way i could learn the topic uh, in a easy manner and cover the entire syllabus in a single day because reading through harrison takes time and to understand each and every point that also takes time covering a one hour video is still easier to complete after a hectic schedule so uh, for ward work also you can sit in ward if you are in night duty you can cover some videos and then go back yeah, look yeah. at at the case that helps a lot you can go through the file and simultaneously watch a video so in for uh, ward based cases so it is of great help and especially answering the questions the rare typical questions of uh, the exam consultants on rounds it all it really helps exactly. I, i would recommend exactly so so that's what so even if you take an example of a case of mitral regurgitation if you look at Har- if you look at harrison you have this basic gist of mitral regurgitation is given so if you look at ma- if you look at marrow several areas have been covered so for example hemodynamics you have to probably look at a hemodynamics textbook therapeutics you have the treatment you have to probably look at your uh, valvular heart disease guidelines so all of this comes in a uh, it's all merged so in a particular video so you have everything in one shot so that is something which is actually great so this is not only true for cardiology it's true for across all the subjects so everything you need not read multiple textbooks because we have done that for you so it makes it far more easier you've completed your uh, md medicine so you're writing your practical so you know everyone is afraid of your practi- of practical so how useful was marrow in your practicals it was very useful in terms uh, the viva starts from the basic clinical concepts and then it goes towards the management so uh, while reading through my, uh, harrison as well as the marrow notes and uh, videos it's easier to attempt all those questions basically the clinical part conceptual part as well as the treatment guidelines so it's a great help uh, they really help in especially in cardiology we generally have a case on valvular heart disease which is uh, synchron and it's mandatory for an md exams so Some they were of great msmr asar yes sir combination yeah. of multiple valvular heart disease so the concepts are very important in those cases and you have beautifully explained those things and uh, rest neurology i got a case on neurology and it was of great help by our videos the, especially the approach so, part i would say yes yeah so was it helpful in answering the questions with your examiners asked yes sir exactly yes sir it is so i think yeah yeah so uh, so how do you uh, what areas would you like to improve in uh, so you know you have this basically a feedback based uh, experience so do you have any particular areas to improve like the interface would you like more topics to be covered some topics to be covered less anything like that uh so uh, a good number of topics are covered in marrow app i would just say ki there are uh, little more uh, subjects where notes are not available so it is exactly. we get a notes like the rheumatology so part your, infectious yeah. disease no When sir i don't make to... my own notes <laughs> i'm not a person who makes her own notes i just go through yeah. the book uh, mark in the book itself and then a short note sticky pad anything like that uh, yeah, so were those marrow a... notes which were available on the app any useful yes so you have uh, these marrow uh, notes available on the app yes sir so uh, for quick revision i for quick revision i went through the cardiology notes uh, nephrology notes and neurology notes because uh, it's uh, quite tedious to watch all those videos again <laughs> for revision especially they are highly volatile and so uh, i went through the notes for quick revision <laughs> so uh, i think uh, you started your preparation around the second year right when you started reading harrison so did you have an intent that around second year itself okay i'm going to start preparing for uh, the uh, super specialty no, exams at that time no no so when sir, did you have I, this I just, inclination to study for super specialty uh, uh, um 6 months for uh, pending sorry i would like six to repeat that part yeah, yeah six months before completion of my md medicine i was oriented towards super specialty exam before that i didn't had any time to even think of ss examination so, so how long do you think one should uh, if one wants to study if one wants to put in uh, a sincere uh, uh, effort to study for this ss how long do you think it, is required 
so it's next to impossible to think of it in first year uh, by beginning of second year you should uh, be sorted in what specialty you are interested in and work or according to it go through the subject go through the special super specialty postings and if not available in your college uh, some other places talk to uh, the dm candidates they help a lot and then when you develop an interest in sub- certain specialties uh, go for it start reading the textbook if you like it pursue it <laughs> Uh, that's what i used to uh, come to the point ki i want to do it dm in nephrology so how long did, how long do you think a candidate uh, should take so i think you study in around 6 months so is one year a fair enough amount of time so that uh, if yes. a candidate so, puts in sincere efforts they can study in one year as, as for the new pattern of uh, exam that we had appeared it was more of clinical oriented so uh, good knowledge of clinical and basic concepts and then one liner uh, were uh, one liner questions were less and as compared to previously and uh, long lengthy questions so if you have good knowledge of basic clinical medicine and then uh, so you can complete it in within 2 years like if sure. you start so from you know. second year start reading for an hour or so by third year you may secure a good rank <clears throat> by so completion of clinical medicine yeah the thing i got the impression from the paper is it was a it was a practical question paper so that if one had done his ward work well if that one has done his md medicine well he could uh, may he could easily get a seat that's what the impression i got it was not a very theoretical question paper where they asked yes, you uh, high five stuff but they asked you any candidate who's done his md medicine pretty decently he could easily score a rank so would i be correct in that assessment yes sir it's totally true many basic clinical questions were there and uh, it was easier because i just completed my md medicine i hardly uh, prepared for uh, uh, one month dedicatedly because uh, it was difficult to that. take time yes sir i think there is a disproportionately large number of first timers securing a seat so all the candidates i have interviewed and most of the people who spoke to me over the phone they are all first chance so i think this particular exam your first chance has a very high probability of success because you are let's say you are fresh from harrison or you are fresh from md yes, medicine sir. and uh, it's all there in your mind there's no time for you to forget even for you you just gave your md exams and straight away wrote the exam so there's no time for you to forget so i think if you are a, a first year pg or second year or five year pg i think the best time is your first attempt if the exam yes, pattern sir. continues as such the best chance is your first and you should aim to clear the exam in your first attempt itself so that is what i think i get the inference from all the candidates who uh, got through there is no more sitting and opening a brown world or fihali and then putting in one year reading that particular textbook and then clear getting the seat so it's like it's everything is going to be in your first chance right so do you have any particular uh, college in mind when you are choosing dm nephrology so you can practically choose any college in the country so any particular college in mind Uh, so actually i had always craved to work in sgpgi though it's a hectic college but then i'll opt for the same yeah so i think you are from up so i don't think language is a problem so i think it's yes, an sgpgi is a very very reputed institute i think it's a brilliant choice and uh, i think uh, um i think i what i what i assess from kritika is she is a very focused student and she had uh, clear cut plans he wanted to take nephrology from the beginning itself and then in spite of all the circus which was going on with the syllabus change in patterns she had a clear goal in mind and uh, that is very important the clarity of thought is very important in the effort and the efforts you put in towards your goal and with that she secured a, a very prestigious rank and i think uh, she is going to get her dream branch in her dream college so all the best kritika and thank you and thank you for uh, this uh, interview and hopefully this is uh, going to be useful for your juniors and we wish you all success in your future endeavors and uh, i hope maro will keep in touch with you and uh, have a nice association with you even as you progress in your career so thank you kritika thank you so much sir